Welcome to the West Side Church in Rockford, Illinois. A legacy of praise, a beacon of hope, a vision of tomorrow. We hope that you enjoy this message. Good afternoon, family. And as our pastor would say, the blessings of the Lord be upon you. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Before I get started with our message, let me go on to a word of prayer. Lord, you're so good. You're so worthy to be praised. We just thank you for who you are. Thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you be with us on this on today with your message that you have given me. Lord, I ask that you, uh, as I decrease, you increase within me. Not by thought nor by recollection, but by your spirit. Let the words flow through my mouth, Lord Jesus. I trust you, sir. And I ask that you open the hearts and minds of your people so that they'll, they'll make room for what you have for us on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to try something different on today um, just to really utilize the space that we are in. And what I mean by that is we're in a position as we've been on for almost a year. Next Sunday will be a, the fir- a year since we start video recording our messages and I want to just try something different and I'm hoping that it is effective and it's not distracting Um, and so we'll move forward. So today I wanted to talk to you about two words, clear vision, clear vision. It was a word that God gave me uh, back in November. The word that God gave me is this, don't move with ambition. Move with clear vision. I was, it, it was in a po- moment in my life where I was making, um, I was deciding what moves I need to make, what, uh, I, what path I need to pursue. And, but at the same time, I didn't want to be in a position where I made it hard for God because I stepped into my way and not his way. And that's what God told me. Don't move with ambition, move with clear vision. So what I want to talk about today is clear vision. And I want to start with this scripture and then move forward. Isaiah 48 verses 17 through 18 in the New International Version. And I'm just going to read the first scripture, the 17th scripture. And I'll read the 18th towards the end. The 17th scripture, the 17th verse says, this is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. Let's stop right there and let let's go to First Samuel, the seventeenth chapter, where we where it's a familiar passage about King David, or well, not even King David, little David. It was the, the, uh, the David and Goliath story. And let's talk about that scripture just to illustrate what uh, it means to not move under ambition, but move with clear vision. So let's, 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 let's dig deeper into that. So I'll be coming to you from 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verses 32 to 39. David... And notice that I changed my background. It's so nice outside. It's 57 degrees, but it has a lot to do with what I'm trying to tell you on today. Okay? David said to Saul, and I'm in the New International Version, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. You're only a boy. And he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. Check this out. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When when it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. 
Saul said to David, go and let the Lord be with you. Now remember what my first scripture, the main scripture that we'll be talking about today. Remember what it said. It said, this is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. Clear vision. Move not under ambition, but clear vision. Now, look at me. You can see how I'm focused. You can see you can, how I, the focus of, the, of this shot is me, but how behind me, my background is blurry. But when I do something like this, Now I'm blurry, right? So many times, this is how we operate in life. So many times we operate under, under the blurriness of life through ambition. We make moves because we feel like it's best for me to make the move. We make moves because, hey, it's about that time. I'm old enough. Or, hey, this is me. This is my season. This is what I, 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 I want to do. And so we make moves that are so blurry, so hard to focus, so hard to see, right? But God is saying, let me give you the clear vision. Let me make it to where the path is straight and not crooked. Let me make it to where you can see specifically where I want you to go. Now let's go back to that scripture with David. Notice. Now, the scripture before, on uh, verse 16, it said, For 40 days the Philistines came forward every morning. Goliath came out every morning to taunt, to make fun of the, the, the soldiers, the armies of Israel. For 40 days, a month and 10 days. And so ambitiously, anyone could come out and say, hey, I got this. If I fight Goliath, I'm going to go down as a hero. I'm going to make moves in life that will help me to be in a better position than I've ever been before, right? They're making moves on their own accord, making life so blurry. Making life so blurry because they're operating under ambition. But notice what David said. David mentioned, your servant let me do this, Saul. You're too young. You a small little boy. No, sir. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came, I carried it off from a flock. I've killed lions. I've killed bears. I can use that experience. I can use that plan of action to conquer this Philistine. Notice that David had a plan before he even went out there. David had some type of experience, some, a vision, before he even went out there. He didn't come into it looking like this. He came focused, knowing what he could bring to this situation and knowing who brought him to this arena. What do I mean by that? The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. David knew from the jump he was not the one who to get the credit. He's doing this. I'm making this move because clearly this is what God wants me to do. Based on these experiences in life, this is what God wants me to do. Move not under ambition. Move with clear vision. My friends, Ambition means uh, make, uh, being resilient and making stri striving rel uh, relentlessly for success through hard work. And there's nothing wrong with that. But see, ambition, you don't know what the move, next move is. You don't know how to stay fo what to focus on when you're just ambitious. You're relying on your own intellect. You're relying on your own skill set. But the Lord said, when I give you a clear vision, when I give you the, the God-given purpose for you to move, I will be there with you. That when you get the clear vision, then you move. So what does that mean? What does that look like? So many times we find ourselves looking at what other people are doing. 
others are making ambitious moves. Others are speaking out or um, making sure that they're heard or whatever it may be and applying for that job. But you said, I want that job, but God hasn't given me the job. Remember what Deacon Alvin always said, Deacon Lewis, when God says nothing, you do nothing. And that rings so true because this is what ambition can do. Ambitious people, ambition, if, if it's not used under wisdom, which most often it's not, can cut others from under the knees, from the knees. It could be a way to uh, step into someone else's lane. It can destroy relationships. It can derail you from what God was trying to do for you. It can make it to where people are looking at you differently. It's making it to where people see you and not God. People see you and not God. See, when God gives you that clear vision for you to move in your own life, he's going to make it to where not only you get to where you want to go, but he gets the glory. And when people see you, they're going to wonder what is different about you. Why is it that you... Uh, I act this way why is it why is it how is it that you got here um, and I don't see you in certain circles well let me tell you I know a man named Jesus and that opens the door for you to really uh, in, uh, help others to understand who God is and the, here's the beautiful part though Beautiful part, um, depending on how you look at it, because a lot of us would rather move under ambition uh, because we are afraid that God ain't going to get us to where we want to go. <laughs> Let me say that again. A lot of us operate under ambition because we're afraid that God ain't going to get us to where we want to go. But remember what the scripture said, Isaiah 48 and 17. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God who teaches you what is best for you. I am the Lord your God who directs you in the way you should go. Now, why is that so important for me to, to emphasize? Because, because God is placing you in a position to be your best self that he's created you to be. Notice that the experiences that David had, the experiences that David had, of a lion and a bear those experiences set him up so that he can be the one to conquer the philistine the experiences that you're going through even now even if you don't like them they set you up for what god has for you even if you don't realize it now but his, this is the thing stay in the here and now and wait until clear vision comes before you and it will and until it does you operate in the capacity that you're in in the best way you can Colossians 323 give it as though you're given for the man for the Lord rather than for men give cheerfully Op work cheerfully work hard as though you're working for the Lord rather than for men and so that's what we do in this space because the Lord is telling us in the here and now that clear vision is coming for every single one of us on an individual level. Clear vision is coming. Clear vision of what is your next move. Clear vision of what God has for you. Clear vision of what God has for this church. Clear vision of what God has for your family. It's coming. It's, it's formulating even now in many of you. And you're seeing things and you're thinking of things that you've never thought before and you're like, hell, that sounds like a good idea. That's something I can really tap into. But why am I thinking about it now? Because clear vision is happening now. And the Lord is saying, refrain from ambition. Don't operate ambitiously. Because when you operate ambitiously, you're more prone to leave me. I'm trying to put you in a position to where you fulfill your heart's desire. When you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37. Delighting ourselves in the Lord means we want what God wants. 
we move how God would like for us to move because we love him so much. And then before you know it, the desires of your heart becomes those that God yearns for you to have. The, your, the desires of your heart become those that are God's purpose for you. And then before you know it, you're, be, you're able to fulfill the, what God is saying, that he's the one who teaches you what's best for you. And he's the one who directs you in the way you should go. Clear vision does that for you. But here's the thing. Remember, I said at the beginning that I'm not going to talk about the 18th verse until the end. Well, I'm here at the end. Now, let me go to the uh, 18th verse, Isaiah 48, verse 18. This is what happens when you sit back and be confident in the, in the vision of God rather than the ambition of yourself. When you do that, this is what happens. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your well-being like the waves of the sea. Have you ever seen the waves of the sea? Better yet, even better, the waves of a lake. Check this out. Listen to those waves. That's what God wants your life to be. They're beautiful. God wants, as chaos is around you, God wants you to be confident and to be at peace because you have clear vision. You're not operating, you're not moving under ambition, you're moving under clear vision. That's my, my message today, short and sweet. Don't move on ambition, move on clear vision. Now, like my prayer is that God helps you to see what your clear vision is even the more. And then when you see, begin to see God's vision, you start to do what the Bible says, and a familiar thing that we say, write the vision, make it plain. You make sure you have pen and paper ready so that when God starts to develop within you the vision he has for you, the clear vision, you'll be ready to move. And so even now, I want to combat fear. Even now, I want to speak against your insecurities because God's vision, no matter what it will be, is going to be bigger than you. It's going to be beyond your scope. It's going to be beyond your imagination. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's how it's going to come. And so what ha happens to so many people is that they never reach it because they let themselves get in the way. And we can't, we can't afford to miss this. You can't afford to miss it. And so Lord, right now I ask that you help us to understand what the clear vision you have for us today. Clear vision for what you have for our lives, especially as we come to the end, near the end, and we start to see brighter days from this pandemic. Lord, help us. To, to put ourselves in a position where we are ready, willing and able to listen to what your clear vision for our lives are and to capitalize and execute on it. Lord, we can't do this without you. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind to this, us succumbing to our insecurities. Lord, our weakness are made strong through you and help us to realize that and help us to grasp that, Lord, so that our peace can be like a river and our well-being like the waves of the sea. Lord, we just thank you right now for your word. Now, God, I ask that you help it to germinate within your people and to be released through our lives as the weeks, uh, as the week goes by. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for rolling with me in the outside. I hope you and the family are well. And remember, don't move on ambition, move with clear vision. Be blessed.